Ha. Once upon a time, <laughs> there lived some powerful beings. They were highly developed and far more intelligent, creative, and gifted than humans and came from another planet. These beings had developed the ability to fly as well as live underwater. They possessed telekinesis and mind-reading abilities and had produced a cloak of invisibility. It was said that bullets would go right through them without harming them at all. They were seemingly indestructible. They called themselves the first. The name was chosen because they were the first sentient beings ever to exist. The first weren't perfect. They had the same flaws that we do. They could be selfish, jealous, envious, cruel, thoughtless, and vengeful. But they were first and they had power. And their power was something they enjoyed wielding, especially against humans. Humans were afraid of them, although nobody had ever actually seen it first. But tales got around. Perhaps the tales of all the amazing adventures and capabilities of the first were exaggerated, but perhaps not. Humans couldn't be sure. Contradictory stories abounded. So it was impossible to know what, if anything, regarding the first was true. But humans had believed in the first for thousands of years. And that's the important fact to remember. Humans believed the stories they heard, at least enough to try to please the first. The first had some humans declared giving instructions to humans as to how the first wanted humans to behave. Of course, the main requirement was that humans obey the first in everything. Humans were to carry out the instructions of the first to the letter. No deviation was accepted. Further, humans had to be better than the first. They weren't allowed to be selfish. Humans weren't. Humans weren't allowed to be selfish, jealous, envious, or vengeful. The first claimed those attributes only for themselves. They required the humans to exhibit a far higher morality than they were capable of exhibiting themselves. Humans knew, or at least they believed, that the first had brought grave punishments in times past on humans who did not bow to the first and do their bidding. The first loved capital punishment and used it for even slight offenses. Humans had even heard, and many believed, that the first had power over death itself and could bring down pain and misery upon the dead. There was no escaping from the first. They were everywhere and saw everything. Since the first could read minds, humans had to watch their every thought. They were walking on eggshells even in their own homes. Some feared that a passing thought or even a dream alone might condemn them in the eyes of the first. Or at the very least, they felt guilty about their dreams and passing thoughts. The first also demanded that humans tell others about them and try to convince everyone around them to serve the first. If they didn't spend their lives trying to gain more slaves for the, for the first, the first declared, then the blood of the unbelievers would be on the hands of the believers who didn't spread knowledge of the first across the land. It was a horrible existence. Of course, the first, or whoever invented the stories about them, had convinced those who followed them that their lives would be much better than they otherwise would be. These humans were convinced that every good thing that came down for them, to them, came down from the first. If a human was able to get a desired job, they declared that the first had been watching and making sure they got it. If they lost their keys, they begged the first to find them. And when they eventually, as happens naturally, found their keys, they praised the first for finding them. They'd go to doctors and have surgery or take medicine. Then when they were healed, by using the medicine or the surgery, they claimed the first had healed them. Even the weather was, humans believed, controlled by the first. It, it, even, uh, so if their wedding day was beautiful and sunny, well, they proclaimed that the first made it so. Humans who believed in the first were extremely superstitious and gullible. It was a hard road to hold for these poor humans. For one thing, they knew that the first weren't exactly great beings. I mean, how could they be? As I said, they had the same bad characteristics that the humans exhibited themselves, only worse. The humans also knew that all the scary stories of death and they, um, they knew about all the story, scary stories of death and destruction at the hands of the first. Then there was the whole life after death threat. If humans didn't please the first while they lived, yet humans couldn't bring themselves not to at least try to please the evil first. 
And that didn't feel good. I mean, how could it feel good? If we know that the beings we're bound to and enslaving ourselves to aren't really worthy of our devotion or praise, we can't feel good about ourselves. We know we have no integrity. We know we're bound out of fear. And so what did humans do? They ignored all the horrible and outrageous behavior of the first and, and lied about them. They went around telling people how good and amazing the first were. The first are good all the time. All the time the first are good, they pronounced. Sure, sure, the first punished, but all loving parents punish their children. It's all for their good, right? At least that's what the humans who worshipped the first convinced themselves of and tried to convince others of. And when anyone attempted to explain to these gullible humans who were devoted to the first that the first might not even exist, and even if they did, they were evil, it upset the devotees of the first. They thought these humans were evil and were trying to steal their joy and peace and drag them down to the level of unbelievers, which would cause them to be rejected by the first and cost them gravely in this life and cast them into some unknown place of torment after death. Dedicated humans spent their entire lives trying to please the first and hoping that they might succeed so that they would, as the first had supposedly promised, live after death on the planet the first inhabited. The first convinced these humans that their faraway planet was perfect. Food and drink were free. Houses were beautiful and provided immediately without pay upon one's entrance into the kingdom of the first. These humans really for, looked forward to all the free stuff they thought they'd receive if only they could please the first. I know this sounds like a fairy tale or myth, but sadly it's true. Not that the first are real, of course, but that humans believe in the first. That part, that second part is true. They don't call these alien beings the first, of course. And the story sounds a little different when we do call them the first rather than, hmm, let's think, gods, for instance. <laughs> Yet, Nothing I've said is different from what we read in the Bible, which humans definitely believe. Recently, someone asked me <clears throat> if it could be proven that Christianity is true, would I become a Christian? I responded by saying, would I, out of fear of the hateful God of Israel, bow down if I knew he was real? Maybe I'd have some integrity and say, no, monster, I won't bow. But maybe I'd be weak and fearfully bow. I can't know. Would I cling to my integrity and not only not bow, but also bravely fight against these beings, whether we call them gods or the first, to save my morality and honor and have a right to live my life as I see fit rather than as a slave, doing my best to stand as a bold example for others to do the same? I can't possibly know what I would do. I like to think, of course, that even if I knew the gods of the Bible, or the first, <laughs> were real, I'd still oppose them. Shouldn't the humans in my story of the first have stood against the first? What is it about the gods that, that makes them different from the first? Are they bigger, bad, or smarter? Does any of that matter, even if it's true? The only reason to obey and worship the gods or the first is fear. And those who worship any being do so for that reason. Well, fear of bad coming on them if they fail to obey in hope of good or free stuff coming on them if they do obey. It's all very selfish. And honestly, it's disgusting. Bowing to monstrous beings who rule by threats and harsh punishments is weak. It's not lovely or moral or anything to be praised. It's not something anyone should take pride in. Those who bow should be ashamed. Remember in Superman 2, when General Zod asked to see the leader of the people of Earth and some man pretended to be the President of the United States in order to protect the real President, Zod was determined that this man bow to him. And the man did. And what was Zod's reaction? Do you remember? He said, you are not the President. No man who leads so many could possibly kneel so quickly. Now here's what's funny. If Zod or Odin or Zeus or Satan says, go, kill that baby, we're evil if we do it. But for some reason I can't fathom, if another powerful being, i.e. Yahweh, says, go, kill that baby, we're evil if we don't kill the baby. Now riddle me that one. And again, it's all so that we can hope for blessings, free stuff, in this life and procure 
procure a mansion after death or so we don't have to burn after death. We are willing to kill babies for a reward. Let me repeat that. We are willing to kill babies for a reward. Some of us are anyway. At least some of us were and would be again if you always said to do it. And even people to this day approve of and admire those who did it in times past. They hold these baby murderers up as holy people to be emulated. They probably admire most the man who was willing to murder his own son to please the first. I mean, the gods. <laughs> but those of us who would refuse to kill a baby for reward are looked down on. We are supposedly the evil people. But it's not about the baby. It's not about the killing. According to the Bible, that's not the problem. Murdering, even murdering babies, is fine. What it's about for Christians is who makes the command to murder the baby. And here's something else, and this one might turn your stomach. It's also about how great the reward is. If it's small and temporal, it's horrible to kill a baby. But if the reward is huge and eternal, then it's great to kill a baby. But why is it nobler to require a higher payment? And on another planet, out, outer space or wherever heaven is, than it is to require lesser reward or payment here on earth. Think about it. If Satan offers us all the kingdoms of the world, pretty big re re reward, but temporal. We're evil if we follow him and do his bidding, whether it's good or bad. But if Yahweh offers us a mansion that lasts forever, we're wonderful people if we do his bidding, and again, whether it's good or bad. We can kill babies for him and practice human trafficking for him. So we know it's not about doing good for him. Are, are those who demand a higher payment, a, a more wonderful reward later, somehow better than those who seek a lesser reward in the here and now? Do they think they're higher class whores and should be praised for it? Now, I mean no disrespect to sex, work, sex workers. It, in order to eat and have a roof over our heads, we all sell our bodies one way or another. We might sell our hands, our backs, or our brains, but we sell ourselves to survive. Yes, she always says not to seek earthly rewards, but to seek heavenly ones. But the truth, despite popular belief, is that it's not really about the reward or where it's given or how long it lasts or who gives it. The behavior is the thing. Killing babies is wrong. Christians say that all the time when, it, when referring to ending a pregnancy. But somehow killing live babies is holy and good. It rattles the brain. But would I bow to the first if I believed they existed? Would I bow to the evil gods if I believed they existed? Well, I did, didn't I? I was like the humans in my story who ignored the evil of the first and obeyed out of fear. I didn't leave Christianity until I no longer believed the gods of the Bible existed. So maybe that's my answer to the person who asked. Maybe I bow. I hope, though, that I've grown and would, would stand against aliens or superior beings who might come to our planet and exhibit cruel behavior toward us. I hope I wouldn't bow to General Zod, but again, I can't know. After all, the God of Israel threatened to make life so hard for his followers that he would cause them to eat their own children. We'd all do anything, lie, steal, cheat, kill for our children, wouldn't we? Y'all even say that he would rejoice at the desolation of human beings. He said he would make people drunk and sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake up. So would I bow, perhaps for my children's sake, so I wouldn't be forced to eat them? Yeah, I probably would. Integrity doesn't mean a lot when you're eating your children. You have no integrity left. Someone near and dear to me told me that she was too afraid even to, con even to question whether Yahweh exists or whether she should obey him. I get it. Yahweh's one scary dude. But I'd like to ask a question now. To the person who queried me or anyone else who wants to answer it, if you knew Satan was the big bad, that is the top dog in the spiritual war, war, world, with the greater power to bring down calamity, misfortune, and destruction on you, as well as bless you if you bow, would you worship him? Oh, now you get that whole we don't have free will thing, don't you? Would you use that free will you think you have to deny and defy Satan if he promised you blessings and threatened to destroy you or burn you if you didn't bow? 
See, there's no difference between Yahweh and Satan. It's all about who has the power. Satan certainly would never ask anything of us that Yahweh hasn't asked. What could be worse than murdering babies and enslaving people? And Satan would be okay if you did a few good deeds here and there, or even a lot of good deeds. After all, he is okay with that, right? Christians believe in him and think he's perfectly fine with people who do all kinds of good things, as long as they do one little thing that keeps them under his control. If we offend him one point, we're guilty of all, remember? That means we belong to Satan. I know Christians like to quote James 3.11, Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? The answer is supposed to be no, but it's not, is it? No. Yahweh blesses and Yahweh curses, just like Satan. Yahweh's a two-face. You see, there is nothing noble about bowing to a higher being just because that being gives us stuff or threatens to harm us. That's actually ignoble. It's dishonorable, shameful, immoral, dastardly, base, low, reprehensible. And when we know about all the evil that this being, if the stories are true, has perpetrated and plans to perpetrate in the future and still bow, you know, to get the good stuff and save our hearts. We shouldn't be strutting around here like a big red rooster, acting all prideful and better than those who refuse to sell themselves and their dignity to some alien power. But I have a lot of sympathy and compassion for those who continue to bow and be slaves to powerful beings like the first especially out of fear. The gods of the Bible are heinous, so I understand obedience to them if a person truly believes they exist. Even if some lowly human stuck a gun to my head and said, bow or die, I'd probably, I'd probably bow. Shoot, I know I would, I'm not stupid. And if the gun was at the head of one of my children, I'd be on my knees before my next breath. This is why truth matters. It's why I try my best to occasionally present truth regarding Yahweh's existence. Telling Christians that Yahweh is cruel, self-centered, and unreasonable doesn't always change anything. It certainly didn't for me. If he's real, he still has power to make our lives and our afterlives miserable. If Christians have put much time into reading the Bible at all, they already know Yahweh is evil, or at least that his deeds are evil. Yes, they make excuses for him because they have to in order to feel like decent people. They ask who we think we are to question their God. They say his thoughts and ways are higher than ours and we simply can't understand. He must have justice, they proclaim, as if killing babies for the behavior of their fathers is just. Or even the human sacrifice they're grateful for is just. They say that Yahweh as creator has a right to destroy whomever he chooses because We're worth no more than clay pots anyway. They, I'm sorry to say, tell us that killing babies or enslaving people isn't that big a deal. In fact, both are good. They have to be, right? Yahweh had people perform both, so baby murder and slavery are beautiful. When all else fails, Christians say Yahweh's God can do as he pleases. That means, of course, that if Satan were God, he could do as he pleases. See, it's all about who the big kahuna is. Oh, and then there's the excuse that Yahweh can't be in the presence of sin. Well, that one just completely destroys the concept of an omnipresent God, doesn't it? How's he in everyone and everything? How's he everywhere if he can't be in the presence of sin? Of course, Christians try to place Yahweh outside of time, space, and matter. But again, that destroys his omnipresence. Plus, he himself declared that he fills heaven and earth. Christians can't get their story straight and they change it depending on what point they're trying to make. It's easy to do because the Bible itself is contradictory. So yeah, telling Christians Yahweh is evil doesn't tend to change their minds about obeying the evil thing. I still think it's important to continue pointing it out. Because if it's said over and over and over, maybe it'll cause Christians to to want to prove it isn't true. And perhaps their deeper study will bring them to the truth that Yahweh doesn't exist, as it has many of us. The Bible is right about at least this, that truth will make us free. Once we understand that monstrous Yahweh is a figment of people's imagination, life gets a whole lot better. We can actually have some integrity. We can stop lying for Yahweh and being slaves to evil beings who supposedly live somewhere out there and 
care about what we eat and drink, what we wear, how we fix our hair, and whose bed our boots have been under. Yeah, yeah, I'm a horrible person. I'm aware that Yahweh is real, and I just hate him, right? The devil's done gone got me. Or, hey, maybe I just want to sin. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If I just wanted to sin, I'd be out there doing a whole lot more than I'm doing. I honestly don't even know what horrible sin it is I might be practicing. I for sure am not approving of baby murder and slavery. I can tell you that. So, at least according to any decent moral code, I've got a leg up on Christians. Thank you all. Bye.